What is field-oriented control? To understand, let's just take a really quick look at how our ESCs work now and what the difference is. There are different ways of controlling a brushless motor. Most hobby ESCs on the market now use what's known as a six-step commutation method. In this chart, if we're looking at the three motor phases, A, B, and C, the three uh, motor wires that you plug into your ESC, and the uh, basically the voltage that we're driving it with. We have six stages during a full rotation. Each phase is either floating, not connected to anything, grounded, shown in black, or connected to battery voltage, shown in red. In each stage, which uh, phase is connected to which uh, voltage gives you the current running through the coils that moves along the, uh, the stator and pulls the magnet along with it. But you can see because we're only turning each phase on, on, off, or to ground, we only have six individual positions that that magnetic field that we're generating can be. So if you look at a diagram of a circle, and this is all 360 electrical degrees, this is uh, ERPM, if you will, each stage will, if we number them, say, each of those phases corresponds to one of these angles on this circle. So when we're on powering at phase one, the magnetic field is here on this line here. And so what this means is if your motor rotor happens to be on this line, it's getting pulled towards line one. The challenge with that is if your motor is here and you're still only commutating on one, that distance is much smaller. And so you get less torque. And so this causes a torque ripple as the, the motor advances in position this one fires and then that one fires and the torque at the beginning of the rotation is really high and as it gets closer to the coil kind of the magnetic degree where um, the magnetic vector that we're energizing the torque falls off until the next vector energizes this is used because it's ex extremely extremely simple hardware wise uh, to do. You don't need a uh, fancy monitoring, it's a uh, sensorless method, and you can trigger your timing advance based on the zero crossing by watching the back EMF coming off the motor. You can watch for when the back EMF voltage crosses zero and use that to time when to get to the next stage. Field-oriented control can be either sinusoidal or trapezoidal, and here um, I have a sinusoidal waveform and we're looking at the same uh, voltage or, or specifically it would be currents um, flowing through each of the phase and here you'll notice they're not stepped it's not going between battery voltage and ground and floating the voltage through each phase is continuously variable and what that means is if our motor rotor is here we can actually chase that we can put a magnetic field here, or we can put a magnetic field here, or we can put a magnetic field there. We're not limited by these six angles in this uh, chart anymore. We can put the magnetic field wherever we want. This, this uh, vector can be in any position because there's no steps in here. Every position along these curves is a different position on this chart. So we can keep our magnetic vector the same distance ahead of the uh, motor rotor so that we're always pulling it the same amount. Now this is a more complicated setup. It's a more computationally intensive. Uh, you need uh, more complicated hardware. You have to monitor at least two of the phases, the current flowing through two of the phases, so you can regenerate the current in the third phase um, in order to constantly do this. But there are potentially some really great benefits as well. One of the big ones is because you're getting rid of this stepping, you can eliminate this ripple torque and have a very, very smooth, quiet operating motor. And there are also benefits in uh, potentially efficiency. It's also a lot torquier, especially at uh, low speeds. It's uh, has a lot more torque, but it's not particularly known as a high-speed application. So of course I just had to take a look and see what it would actually do for us in our situation. 
So to get started, I grabbed a Texas Instruments Piccolo microcontroller and one of their driver development boards. The ESE firmware is based on a Texas Instruments reference implementation, uh, and it's just a very, very simple PWM-driven ESE controller. For the motor, I'm just using an old MT2204 because it was really easy to get tuned uh, on both of the PID controllers for the ESC, both the current and the speed PID controllers. The sense network on the motor driver development board is not meant for as high RPMs as we get to, so unfortunately we're limited to uh, no more than 16,000 RPM, which is only about 75% of the speed that we'll get out of this motor. Um, but again, since we're comparing uh, like to like, uh, we can just look at that speed range on the uh, BL Heli SCs and that shall serve perfectly fine. Here's BL Heli. Listen in particular for the sound it makes when it first starts up and the shrill whine as it accelerates after that. And now with the field oriented control. So much quieter at idle. And not only is it quieter, it starts up and spins at significantly slower speeds. Not really a big deal with us for the quads, but we're in BL Heli, you'll often have to have like 5 to 7% throttle to get a smooth, clean startup. This field oriented controller can start up no problem at 5 or 4 or 2 or even 1% throttle. And far below that, even, getting motor startups at 300 RPM is quite easy. It was also fun to play with at uh, dead idle. Um, you wouldn't, if you stalled it, it wouldn't desync and have any problems. Here I'm just stalling it with my fingers, and it just pushes a little bit and instantly recovers as soon as it can spin again. Now, because of the limitations of my firmware, really the only uh, sort of chart that makes any sense to look at. Uh, to look at them to compare with is the efficiency. We know we're going to hit a lower top speed and because of the way the speed controller works even comparing throttle value to throttle value doesn't give us uh, really anything because I can change the throttle values to whatever I want in the uh, the firmware. So, um, And this was really exciting when I first saw it. We're looking at uh, the watts uh, thrust over wattage and uh, this one here on the bottom is the BL Heli, uh, BL Heli S, and uh, the one here on the top is uh, the first log I ran on the field oriented control ESC. And this gap here is about 5%, so this is seeing 5% higher efficiency. Except I adjusted the tune of the PID controllers in the field oriented control ESC in order to get the um, the top speed higher so it wasn't um, it wasn't failing to sync uh, higher RPMs and you see the efficiency drop down uh, to just about exactly the same as we get out of the BL Heli ESC a little higher that's uh, here in the uh, the mid band and, and the low band uh, could very very easily be noise um, but you can see the efficiency dropping off and ending up being just almost exactly the same now this is uh this was uh, very rough firmware and I I didn't uh, get a very fine uh, tune of the PID I just kind of tweak numbers um, back and forth to get it uh, to get it to work. I didn't uh, go in and, and adjust stuff on the scope like I really should. Uh, so this is in no way a, a proper PID tune on it, but you can see the amount of variability that we can have in there. And when I reran the BL Heli test, uh, limiting the, uh, the peak to only about 75% throttle, which was about the same as uh, the throttle RPM that we're getting out of the other one, you see its efficiency raised as well, and it's following right in line with the improved efficiency that we saw out of the field-oriented control. So if there's a difference here, um, my equipment is not really sensitive enough uh, to see it. We're seeing other effects that are going on. Obviously the tuning of the, uh, the PID controllers in the, uh, the field-oriented control um, 
can make a difference and there's almost certainly a lot on the table uh, that you could go in and adjust it for better efficiency um, and you can do things like uh, you can start off in field oriented control mode and you can switch to a different computation method at a certain RPM or uh, depending on the needs of the system like there's all kinds of things that you can do with it but no magic bullet here efficiency wise and at the same time with something with no effort put into it you can see we're not doing any worse either so there you go